Well, hey there, my friend. Welcome to another edition of the Thriving Christian Artist Podcast. I'm Matt Tommy, your host, and really excited to bring you a great interview today from a new friend of mine, Sophie Dare, who is an artist down in Jacksonville, Florida. Like so many of us, she's had this incredible story of ups and downs, starting in one way, but finishing in another, and, and seeing these continual themes uh, of, of not only art, but also building relationship come around in her life and seeing God lead and use her life in incredible ways uh, to not only make an income for her family, but also bring uh, blessing and healing to others. And so I'm really excited to uh, share her story with you today so that you can be inspired. You can find all the information about what Sophie's doing down in the show notes right here. So you can click and, and get all those details and, and visit her on Instagram and, uh, and, and just kind of con continue to connect with her there. One of the things that we talk about inside uh, of today's interview is the importance of relationships. And so I want you to be listening for that all the way through uh, and learn just to listen to the Holy Spirit as she's telling you these tips and telling you her experience, because so many people think nowadays, oh, selling online and Instagram and Facebook and, and, you know, all those sort of things, they're silver bullets. But you know what? You can have all the silver bullets in the world, but at the end of the day, guess what? It comes down to relationship. Whether you're selling online, whether you're selling on in person, if you want to build a healthy art business at any level, whether you're just trying to supplement uh, your retirement or current income, whether you're trying to replace a part-time income or actually transition into your art full-time, it's through building relationships, not only online, but also in person and within your community that are going to be the seeds in which God's going to bring growth uh, in your art business and in the potential uh, that, that you have to, to grow and do incredible things, to really develop the, the profit that you need and develop the income, regulated income that you need on a regular basis to do the things that God has called you to do, not only for you to be blessed, but also to be a blessing to others. So keep your ears open today on the podcast, and I would love to, to hear some of the aha moments that you have. You can leave those in the comments below if you're listening on, on the podcast and not over on YouTube. You can leave those in a review, or you can email us. You can tag us in a comment. Just let us know that the podcast is a blessing to you, all right? Well, hey, I'm going to get out of the way. You're going to love this interview with my new friend, Sophie Dare. Well, hey, friends, so glad that you are with me on the podcast today. I've got a new friend with me today, Sophie Dare, who is an incredible artist and not only has a heart for Jesus, but a heart for sharing her story of encouragement with other artists. So, Sophie, thank you so much for being on the podcast today. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't want to take away from your introduction because I could talk about North Carolina and University of Georgia and all these other things, but why don't you tell everybody who you are and where you're from and, and what you do creatively? Okay. I am Sophie Dare. Um, my last name is Denty, Sophie Dare Denty's, but I usually go by Sophie Dare in the art world. That's my middle name. I am on the outskirts of Jacksonville, just below Jacksonville in Orange Park, Florida. And my husband and I have lived here over 30 some years, although we're North Carolina natives. And I'm an artist, muralist, uh, painter, um, designer. I do a lot of things even in the nonprofit industry. So I've kind of scattered my creativity all over the place. I guess. That, I'd like a lot of us today. too. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes yeah. it's, it's a long and winding road to get to where we are creatively. So right. did you grow up as, a, as an artist, creative family or things like that? Or I was the only one really that had artistic inclinations in my family, but I ended up at the University of Georgia yeah, in graphic design. And um, ironically, I was trained by hand at the University of Georgia and the year I graduated, everything went to computers. In that southern. So, yeah, that's how I ended up being a muralist for about six years. All wow. over the beaches so, in Ponte Vedra. So did you, have, did you have anybody that kind of inspired you in the mural side of things? Or you just thought, I better do this if I want to make a living? Or how did you get into that? I was so frustrated being on, you know, this is old school computers when it was PC, it was a Mac and IBM, and I just, I really hated all that. So um, I decided to treat myself to a course, uh, faux fin this is when faux finishing was so yeah. popular, and I took a course in that and got to know some of those gals, and we just stayed busy. You get into a high-end neighborhood, and uh, everybody competes with everybody else, and you could stay there for a year painting in 
home. So it, it went from there. And it was a nice business to have when I had little toddler children as well. I'm you sure, know. you know, working in that luxury market too, because that's kind of how I built my business in woven sculpture is through referrals in the luxury mountain home market here in, in Asheville. But that really is kind of a, as you look back on it, at least it has been for me, it was kind of a masterclass in, in sales and referrals and building relationships because you realize you can build a great business with, without having to do all the, the social media things and the endless marketing, marketing, marketing. You, can, you really can just do it uh, a lot so much through relationships, can't you? Well, we didn't have social media back That's then. That's right. <laughs> it was word of mouth, and I just took notes in the notebook, and yeah, you just went by referrals. I called on decorators and worked with them, and it was very lucrative back then. Um, of course, that was before the whole industry changed and economy fell through, but murals are actually coming back right now, uh, I think, and I've done, the last thing, few I've done over the last three years have been community murals, where we do outdoor street art and oh, cool. include, uh, it's really been more fun projects where we include like the local art guild to come in and help help paint. So I've got some of those under my belt. So when that industry started to change initially for you, you know, faux finishing and, you know, residential murals and, and that sort of thing, did you go immediately into your fine art direction? And, and I guess uh, even deeper question is, what was that transition like? Because I know nobody likes to kind of give up the cash cow, if you would. And, you know, we all think that we're just going to be on this upward trajectory forever, but things change, styles change, the economy changes. How did you navigate that in your life? Uh, and we were talking about you know, all the many things that I've done, but I know I got out of it early on because um, around 2000, I was pregnant with my third child. My oldest son had special needs. Um, it was just a time for me to get off the scaffolds. Mm. And so I, I laid it down then before the economy really fell. Out. Yeah. So I've done a lot of different things throughout the years, uh, including rolling into getting back on the computer, um, doing a marketing, um, product design, just a lot of graphic design and business development um, since then. Yeah. So did your fine art, was it kind of just, it turned into a hobby for you at that point or? It was, yeah. I've gone through so many different phases where I couldn't really do the art that I wanted to do um, yeah. just because of the economy or because of the needs at the time. And um, there were several years, actually, I had to step back completely when I was a special needs mom. Of course, I guess that's part of my story uh, is our oldest son, um, Joshua, had such severe special needs that we lost him when he was eight wow. in 2002. But there were quite a few years there where I was just basically, when you're a special needs mom, you have no doubt what your number one job is. And yeah. really, that just takes over everything. Um, and then I homeschooled my middle son for several years as well. So there were years where I really couldn't be an artist full time. Um, but I, I guess that's one of the things I love talking about is how much our creativity rolls into other areas. Mm. Because I was just a creative homeschooler. I did a lot of art with my boy. My boys are all very kinesthetic, hand on, hands on. We did a lot of art and I ended up teaching homeschool groups uh and then that rolled into special uh, private school groups so I, I taught art for a lot of years so i was able to still share art you know it wasn't a business form. yeah you seem to be the type of person that okay if this doesn't work out i'm just going to switch and we're just going to do it this way we're going to do it that way that is i would just uh, to affirm you and say that is not always a normal thing for sometimes you know sometimes people will be like if something changes in their life it can absolutely shut them down i'm assuming that it's been your walk with the lord and maybe a healthy marriage and and just a good dose of self confidence and that sort of thing that has helped you to to walk through that but talk about the the changing of those seasons because although you're just saying oh i, I went to this and then went to that those are not always easy and because a lot of times we define ourselves by the progress that we're making or not making. And those transitions can be difficult, can't they? I think that's one of the benefits of being an artist and always knowing how much you love art is you have a coping mechanism for everything. Mm -hmm. um, and so you can always return back to your art in some capacity or just that creativity. Of course, we all have, my husband is Greek and he loves to cook. He has creativity in the kitchen. You know, we all have creativity in different ways. But um, to always be able to go back to that has really been key for me, uh, especially dealing with loss and grief after losing him. Um, and, and I got to a point where 
Um, I did not want to talk to God. I didn't want to hear from him. I knew he loved me. And it, it, going through loss and grief, I always knew he loved me. Um, but, you know, you just you have that numbness of yeah. your expectations not being met. Um, but I started noticing all of the uh, little things in nature. I went out with my camera and started looking for balloons and butterflies. And I got really obsessed with magnifying little things like that. Um, and that really rolled into just a whole collection of, of balloons. And I actually did a whole broken butterfly series. I noticed wow. most of the butterflies that you go see at the rainforest or whatever and down in Gainesville are broken. They're all torn. Their, their life is so brief. Um, and so that rolled into a whole series of message. Um, I ended up even being a speaker for a short time there, just grief and wow. coping. Uh, and I think art is so inspiring for people. Um, you know, even if they aren't, aren't, they don't feel artistic, your art inspires them, you know, through situations like that. Yeah. I think about my own journey and so many of the artists that we work with in the mentoring program or just that listen to the podcast, it's like, a lot of times we have this idea that if I'm going to be an artist, it's got to look like this and it's got to happen in this order and that sort of thing. And what I'm just loving about your journey is that, you know, you known that you've been an artist the whole time, but it's had these different iterations, these different seasons, these, sometimes it takes the forefront, sometimes it's taking a back seat, but it doesn't mean that you're any less an artist. It just means that the season in which it's expressing and how it's expressing itself is is a little different. I know now you're, you know, it seems like art has come back into the, to the forefront of your life and, you know, with selling your art and creating on a regular basis. So how did that transition happen and, and what's your life looking like now as far as your art business and, and all of that? Um, I had several years that I did work in marketing. Um, I actually even did two years working at the airport designing a new uh, incentive program for them. But I decided, I guess it was 2016, that I wanted to come home back and be a full-time artist again. Um, and it was a struggle. I, I got licensed with the, through the furniture market, which was you know, one of those little 5% um, royalties. I mean, just, there's nothing. It really didn't produce very big checks at all. And I would say yeah. anybody that gets into licensing, you know, you've got to have like 20 or 30 different yeah. <laughs> going, I guess. Definitely made up on volume, right? <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, to be lucrative. Um, but yeah, it has been a struggle. And I had a Shopify site for about six years that really just kind of sat dormant and um, participated in a lot of local events and local exhibits. But um, I, I, I just past year, in fact, I was also working part time during that time for a local nonprofit um, that I started working with and um, doing work and working in the development program. And I still do about 10 hours a week for them as well from home. Um, creating brochures and things like that. But um, this past year, I guess, you know, we all went through such a change with yeah. uh, the last two years, just being isolated and being home. And I decided I really need some change. So um, I switched over to a new platform called um, Art Storefronts. ASM. You know, the social media thing, I guess, is one of the things I wanted to touch on because it can be so consuming. You could spend yeah. years analyze studying other artists and just being on there all the time and working and trying to make something happen and it's so frustrating because the whole time you're trying to figure it out then the algorithms change and i just i felt like i was so consumed with that and so consumed with the comparison with other artists also but i switched over to this program this past summer because it gives you a calendar yeah an actual marketing calendar to follow so you know exactly what to do what not to do what works and doesn't work um, and that really helped me to gauge how much time I'm spending or wasting on, on social media. Um, and as soon as I had invested in, and that was also building a whole new website platform. As soon as I had done that by September, um, I got hacked and lost all of my social media accounts. Oh. <laughs> Everything was gone. Um, so, and that was actually, I think, a huge lesson to, of course, in taking care of your passwords. Sure, back about up. the same passwords <laughs> every, all over the place. Um, but also it helped me to realize what's really important. They, this program had already helped me um, realize that one of the biggest assets as an artist is not social media, but it is our newsletter and our con direct connections with people yeah. who love our work. And so it didn't hurt quite as bad. You know, I just got back on there and dusted myself off and decided, okay, 
the, the benefit here is it cleared out over a thousand people like on Facebook that I don't even know. You know? I so agree because I, I teach people in our mentoring program all the time. I said, I don't care how big your vanity numbers seem to be on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or TikTok or whatever, unless you are driving them to your website, which is your hub and developing an opt-in, you know, email is king and you've got to, that gives you the control that gives you the ability to contact them. And like you're saying, really leverage those uh, individual relationships that, and it, isn't it funny all these years later, you're back to doing the things that worked back in the faux finishing days. And that, <laughs> but it's like those, those things, they're not old, they're true, right? Those are true methodologies. And whether it's happening on technology or happening in person or whatever relation, I always tell people, you know, no connection, no sale, no relationship, no sale. But if you do have connection and relationship, you only can enhance your ability to, to create. And it sounds like you're, you're seeing that even in the midst of losing your social media accounts and all that. Well, and I'll tell you something that really surprised me um, this last quarter. It was the best quarter I've had. And my volume all came from, I would say under 10 people. It was past customers. And I, you know, you think somebody buys something from you once, and that's great, and you always have to get, keep going out and getting new customers. But I never thought about the people who buy something from you because they love your art and they yeah. want to buy the next thing, and then they wait for the next collection to come out and they keep wanting to buy your art. But my my entire quarter was really supported by under ten people. Wow! Um, it was just amazing that past customers kept buying. It was just, you know, I have a. a a gal in New York, I think she bought nine different pieces. And Come on. It was just so awesome. And I thought, you know, this, these are relationships I really do need to take more seriously and um, stay in connection with. Yeah, I love that. Value those people. Don't worry about all the other people out there, but just value the people who are already in, in your fold and love your work. That's right. Yeah, there's, a, as we all know, as artists, there's a big difference between people who tell you you're really talented and, oh, you're so awesome. I love your work. And the people that actually whip out the credit card, right? <laughs> they actually say, I want your art in my house. That's yeah, right. Or that's in my right. home or in my business. Yeah. That's right. Really different. You know, if you had to give one piece of advice today for artists who are maybe struggling with the whole social media overwhelm and that sort of thing, and they're hearing you talk about, hey, I had a great quarter and it came from 10 people. What would you encourage people uh, that are listening today as far as how to begin to manage that social media and really press into the people that are actually their best potential clients? Oh, wow. Um, well, and you know, I still go back to, it all starts locally too. One of the things I think is, is key for people, especially after this whole isolation we've had the last couple of years is getting involved locally. Yeah. And I've joined several art guilds locally um, just for the relationships yeah. and that, that opens the door to local exhibits and just participating with your work. And yes. And when you do that, you get a lot of feedback from other artists as well. And then finding groups like your group where you actually have that camaraderie with other artists is That's right. so key. Um, you can sit alone in your home and compare yourself on social media all you want. And there's always just amazing artists on there. And I, I mean, I could spend my whole day just looking at other other accounts and people that I, I would love to be like, or, you know, just trying to get ideas, but it's really those, those personal relationships that you have, I think that are, that are going to help you the most. Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember you can't build relationships on social. Yeah. I remember when the pandemic started, you know, and all that started coming down the lockdowns and all that sort of thing. I still got a steady, you know, supply, if you will, of commission inquiries from people that were my local partners, galleries and interior designers, because the luxury home market has been on fire, you know, during all this time, people are building and buying like never before. And again, I don't care what the economy is doing, nothing trumps relationships. When you have relationships, they make a huge difference. And even if you're an introvert, you're out there today, listen, you're like, oh, I can't go out and network and I can't do this. Listen, God's created you uniquely. And there's people that you can connect with and there's people that he has for you to connect with and you can absolutely do it. But I, I just so echo the things that you're saying, Sophie, because being involved locally and online, not just thinking that online is a silver bullet, um, they really do help to, you know, work in tandem with each other. So 
I just, and I would say too, really um, seeking God for how you can use your gifts and talents. That's to right. Other people. Um, and there's so many different ways you can do that. I still teach an occasional once a month. I have uh, courses I teach locally at an art shop. Um, and I just recently, and I've, I've worked for a nonprofit, but I started thinking about what nonprofit uh, issues, charity issues really give me grief mm. that I really want to make an impact in what can I do? And I started thinking about um, human trafficking. Um, and I got involved with uh, her son, Jacksonville. Mm. That is the Tim Tebow's organization is partnered with them. Uh, and I just found out this past week, I've been approved. They've done the background check and everything for me to come in and teach art therapy to their ladies, their clients. Oh, love it. Yeah, these are the ladies that come out of human trafficking. And so that's a whole new thing for me. And I'm, I, you know, of course, right now it's volunteer, but I'm, I'm very excited about that, about just sharing art with them. And again, it's as a coping mechanism, as something that can uh, give them joy. And, you know, I just, Anyway, I'm very excited about that. I love that. And I think, you know, same kind of thing as you begin to develop relationship and, and influence there. Nonprofits are a great place to meet other potential clients and other potential partners. And you're, that's how your business grows. I think it's when people think about their art business in such a transactional way, that is, you know, I put a post on Facebook and nobody bought anything, you know, what's going on, as opposed to thinking, no, you got to sow a lot of seeds. You got to be online. You got to be in person. You got to be developing relationships. You got to be sending emails and all of that stuff. As you begin to put it out there, I just think of the more, I always think the more I put out there, the more I'm giving Holy Spirit to move on and in and through to, to generate the clients and connections that I need to thrive. And um, I love that you're, you're doing the same thing, Sophie. It's, it's exciting to watch. So I know folks are going to want to connect with you online, on social, and that sort of thing. So where's the best place that they can uh, connect with you to find out more about what you're doing? I am back on Instagram uh, as sophie.dare.designs. Nice. Um, I had to sh change that a little bit. And um, just trying to grow that fledgling account. Um, and then my website, sophiedare.com. Awesome. I love it. Well, Sophie, it's a joy to get to meet you and chat with you today. And Everybody definitely click the links that are in the show notes here. You can you can see what Sophie's doing online and uh, connect with her further and all she's doing. Thanks so much, Sophie, for being on the podcast today. Thank you very much. I look forward to looking into your mentorship program too. Amen. <laughs> hey, wasn't that a great interview? I told you it would be. I, I hope that you uh, really, really enjoyed uh, the interview that I just did with my friend Sophie. Listen, she actually mentioned becoming a part of our Creative to Thrive Artist Mentoring Program is something that's been on, uh, on her heart uh, to take her art journey to the next level. And I'm, I, I just thought, gosh, I can't stop the podcast and stop this, stop this today without giving you the opportunity as well to become a part of the Creative to Thrive Artist Mentoring Program. You know, the mentoring program is not just a bunch of teachings in a vault somewhere. It's a community of artists just like you who want to grow spiritually, artistically, and in business from a kingdom perspective and quit doing it by themselves to walk with each other and to walk with me along the way so that we can, we can give you step-by-step step exactly what to do, not just based on my best ideas, but based on a kingdom framework that God gave me years and years ago to help me take my hobby into a six-figure successful art business. In that five-step framework, uh, we actually teach you how to begin to think differently, create with the Holy Spirit, build connection with people in the marketplace, build a business that will bring income into your life at whatever level you want to do, and begin to live the life that Jesus designed for you as an abundant uh, child of God in er to walk in all the promises that he's, he's got for you. That's our heart, and that's the pathway that we develop inside the Creative to Thrive Artist Mentoring Program. If you'd love to find out a little bit more about how that framework works, 
and why maybe some of the things that you've been doing may seem like they work, but they actually just have led to a lot of frustration. I'd love to invite you to watch a quick workshop that I did. It's an hour long workshop called How to Start Thriving as the Artist that God Created You to Be. It's absolutely free. Inside, I, I show you the three frameworks that most artists are using in their life that seem like they might work, but only end in frustration and and uh, just a lot of like, ah, I'm, I'm tired of this. Even, even people end up giving up because they're using some of these frameworks. And then I also share with you the five-step framework that's called the Created to Thrive Artist Framework. There's the one that I've been using for a lot of years, the ones that I, that I teach uh, artists all over the world inside of the mentoring program. It's the only proven framework for Christian artists to help you move from struggling on your own to thriving as the artist that God's called you to be spiritually, artistically, and in business. You can watch that workshop absolutely free, and uh, you can just click the link that's right here inside of the uh, show notes and uh, get all the access to that that you need. And you can watch it over and over and over. It's absolutely free and you can watch it at your convenience. All right. Hey, my friend, again, I love you very much. Thanks for being with me on the podcast today. Until next time, remember, you were created to thrive. All right. Bye.